All right, I'm tying tonight over here at uh, Hatch Finders here in Livingston, Montana. I'm going to be tying my CDC uh, Caddis Emerger. You can tie this in a lot of different sizes. Um, I actually prefer a, uh, a 12. Um, you can tie it in 14, 16, all the way up into 8s if you're going to be doing, you know, like a October Caddis. October Caddis aren't really emerging. They crawl out and then go, but um, they will eat these things like crazy if they're tied like in a bright orange. Um, I'm going to be tying on a 135 um, size 12 scud hook. So I got that nice arch on the the shank itself. I'm going to be using a 3 aught monocord, which is my preferred thread for most things. And I'm actually going to start this thread with a purpose right here behind the eye, um, as close as I can. It's hard to do on that. I give myself a little bit of idea of where I want to finish out um, to start the head. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that thread back <coughs> along the shank. And again, on these curved hooks, it's real important to find out where the shank actually ends by bringing in, if you're tying down along the back end of the bend. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to where it's at and how to position it in the vise. And if you bring your thread forward like that, that'll tell you about where you're at on that shank. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up with a thread once I've set my basis. <coughs> and I'm going to take a little bit of uh, 20 thousandths lead. And, I'm and the reason I'm using that big is, is I'm only going to put in about four wraps right here at the front end. And that's just to get this thing down just a little bit. And it'll tumble in the water. It'll roll. And then I'll tie that down nice and tight with some thread wraps. And right behind that, most caddis have kind of a, a slenderer body. It's, it's not, it's going out this shape rather than being round. So I kind of flatten it out by the next material, which is a piece of uh, French tinsel. I prefer to use French tinsel over wire on a lot of different bugs because it gives it a lot more optical illusions and flash. Wire gives one uniform, the French tinsel gives multi layers of different types of flash. And I'm going to tie that on the side of the shank and just walk it right, walk my thread right back down to the bend there. And throw on a half hitch. And I'm complete with that. Now this particular material is actually designed for um, doing dry flies. It's actually CDC, but it's dubbing. And I love this stuff, um, but I use it on more nymphs than I do dry flies. And you don't want to have a lot of air circulation going on when you're using this stuff because it's very, very fluffy. That's one of my favorite words that I use on the weekly fly is fluffy. I like fluffy bugs. And I'm just going to use a single strand method and just wrap that down onto the thread like so. And you can see that how the little pieces stick off of it. And that creates a, a real live action to the bug itself. And a little bit goes a long ways. In other words, you just want to coat the thread. There goes some. So you want to do about two to, two to three inches of dubbing on the thread and then go ahead and start um, wrapping it around the shank. And what I'm doing is I'm just creating the body of the caddis. I can always add more, but it's harder to take off the dubbing. I need just a little bit more dubbing there. You can see how that thing's already starting to kind of get some life to it with the little pieces that are sticking off of it. You see me licking my finger, but it gets real tacky. So I don't, I don't want to use wax on this because wax really defeats the purpose of, uh, on this particular material. But it gives me just enough tackiness to put some dubbing onto the thread. I really enjoy using this little pattern because it's 
It's kind of cool, as you can see, it's floating all around me now that I lose a few pieces. And it does the same thing in the shop when you're tying. You get certain pieces that don't work quite right or you gotta do that and you kinda, you gotta kinda get used to it. And tying it and talking about it at the same time is not necessarily a good thing because you end up swallowing some of it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to build that body up. There, that looks really nice right there. That looks really buggy. And I'm going to readjust that hook just a little bit so I can work with that curvature. And you can see how this kind of swims. All this stuff will swim in the water. I'm going to go ahead and bring this French tinsel up and start using an open palmer on it and just wind it through that dubbing. And what this, it has several different things. It creates a segmentation of the body. It also adds a little bit of a transparency look to it. And uh, which is really important on caddis because they're very transparent insects. And you can see how that is. You could actually brush this a little bit, but it's not really necessary because the more it gets chewed on, the better it gets. You can see some of that sticking out like so. Now what I'm going to add is I'm going to add a little bit of uh, mirage flash to it. Um, I have three strands here, but I'm going to tie it in with a little bit sticking out over the front. Come down in here, tie that down like so. And before I actually finish it off, I'm going to take my fingers, I'm just going to pull that back and tie it down. Advance my thread a little bit. And I'm going to want this fairly short, but not, not real short. Just about like that. It kind of gives you a nice little flash there. And what I'm going to tie in is one of my favorite feathers to use for a lot of different things. Um, I've stripped down a piece of uh, sharp tail grouse. And I really like using the, the under fluff right here and then the, the barring in it too. Because it adds to this particular insect, it adds a lot to it. I'm going to go ahead and tie that in. You want it face down, a curvature to it. Come down and snip that off. Make sure it's tied in securely. Now I'm going to wind that fluff that's on the bottom of the hackle or the feather right in and around that, like so. And you can see this how it's nice and fluffy in there. Keep winding that forward and you can see some more. So you're going to get about one, one and a half wraps and then you start getting in your barred material from the feather. Or modeled look. Go ahead and tie that off. I'll make a couple more wraps on there. But I just want to kind of give that look of what I'm just going to blow on it for a second here. You see the action that it has. Well, that creates that as, a, as an emerging insect coming up like this. It's awesome. And I'm just going to force it back like so a little bit. What's nice is, is with that flash underneath there, sure, it adds a little bit of flash, but it also creates that illusion, you know, of something swimming and transparent again. I'm just going to tie that down to where it's kind of coming back a little bit. You have that right like that. And then I'm going to add some of my little black dubbing. Still using a single strand technique. I can just touch it on the thread like that and then come back and kind of wind it out there. You don't need a lot. Just enough to coat that thread. And do it in stages where you're not trying to get it all on there at once. Do it really loosely. And what I'll do is I'll hold those feathers out of the way by using my fingers and I'll start wrapping that right up so, making my head on that caddis right up to the front. And with that hackle in there, 
or that feather from the sharp tail, I get legs, I get all kinds of different looks on it. Go ahead and whip finish that. There's your fly. The CDC Caddis Emerger.